Hi, this is the book of Revelations of St. John the Divine. Chapter 10, verses 1 through 11. Verse 1 reads, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders other their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which I, which it says, which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lift up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that therein are in the earth and the things that therein are in the sea in the things which are therein that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seven angels, and it didn't say in, let's read verse seven again. But in the days of the voice of the seven angels, when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God, should be finished as he had declared to his servant the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the hand, the angel's hand. I'll read that again, verse 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly, belly was bitter. The last verse. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many people and nations and tongues and kings. So this is verses. 1 through 11 of the book of 
of Revelation uh, chapter 10. I'm gonna, we're going to address the um, chapter uh, 10 verses 1. It said, John said this when he said, I, and I, talking about John, saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, wrapped with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. Big angel. And his face was as it were the sun. So you look at the sun, you can you can imagine it. That's what John wanted us to do. Take a look at the sun. And that's how bright it was. Yeah. And this is how you can get understanding. And his feet as the pillars of fire. So the pillars of columns of fire, it was like fire as it looked like it to him. Verse two. And he had in his hand a little book. He's a big angel with a little book, a little scroll open and he set his right foot upon the sea this is what john looking at his his one his feet are up on it's on the sea and his left foot on the earth this is what he's looking at this is the vision that this is what he was able to see with his uh, natural eyes that god had allowed him to see that we wouldn't have never been able to see. It didn't, yeah. And verse three, and cried, this is what the angel did, and cried with a loud voice, not John, but the angel, as when a lion roareth. So you know how loud a lion sound or roars. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered, their voices. When he had cried, seven thunders had uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, this is what John said, I was about to write. And I heard a voice, John saying, a voice from heaven saying unto me, saying unto John, seal up these things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. So John was going to write something that we don't even know what he was going to write. Only John. Mm -hmm. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea, back to that angel and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven. That same angel that he saw earlier. And swear by him that liveth, that means by him that lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein, therein, I remember I said therein means in it, are, that's what it said, therein are, in the earth, in the things that therein are, that means in it, in the sea, which the things which are therein that there should be time no longer. So time no longer is no time. No, it won't be any more time. It won't be, it's not, it's not necessary anymore because he already done all of these things. You remember the word should in our own English, the word should in our own English, and most of us know what the word should be, is a past tense of shell. So there we go right there with the English language. And it's talking about something in the past. And as you look at it, when we go back and read that again, you know that he had already done all of those things. He created heaven and earth and the things that they're in that was, that's in the earth, including man, human, including the animals, the vegetation, all of those things. Moving along. Verse seven. But in the days, but here we go with the but. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall, shall, hasn't happened yet, shall begin to sound the mystery of God, 
should be finished. Should be finished. Remember what I've said? Should it? And as so, shell is still present. So when that happened, it'll be finished. There you go, right there. That's revelation, right there. As the as he had declared, declared, and I already spread that news to his servants, the prophets. I already told them. That's why it's a prophecy because he's foretelling. Yeah. Verse 8. In the voice which I heard, John, here we go, John again, from heaven spake unto me again. Here he goes again from heaven and said, prophecies to speak from heaven. I always remember that. Go and take the little book, the little scroll, which is open, which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth or which stands on the sea and on and upon the earth. So he identified which one he wanted him to go to. It wasn't the only one at the time anyway, but this he wanted him to go directly to him. So he John don't get this mixed up. This is where I want you to go to. Now he's getting the ability to go to an angel, a giant looking like a giant and go get the little book. And uh, John did what he was told to do from heaven, that spoke from heaven. And I went unto the angel and said unto the angel, give me the little book. And the angel said, and it shall be, it, uh, so he said, give me the little book. We still, we're in verse nine. And he said unto me, the angel said unto John, take it and eat it up and it shall guarantee make thy belly, make your belly bitter, your stomach that is, but it shall be in your mouth, thy mouth it says in King James, sweet as honey. And John, this is what John said in verse 10. I took the little book, the scroll, out of, out of the angel's hand. I took it. God gave him the ability to take it out of the angel's hand and ate it up. Ate up the scroll. It's not food, but he was told to do this. And he obeyed. But it's a reason. Moving on. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. <laughs> John is not eating up that book, that scroll for nothing, as we'll read on. And as soon as I, that means that immediately, as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter, my stomach. And he said unto me, the angel, thou must, meaning you must, no doubt about it. You must. Is no. You can't go around this. Prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. I remember in the dream when I was called, when I recognized my calling after I was born again to preach and teach. When I recognized it, I was like Samuel kept going to the priests. You know which one. He had a lot of issues with his sons. Read it. And the first time he thought it was him. Then he kept on. He said, if you do this and that, then you know it. He woke him up again. And then he just had to tell him, he said, you know, it's the Lord if it speaks. So that's my dreams was this right there at the end. Many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. I was in the dream preaching to people. And one thing God, the Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ said to me, even though I was looking at him on a, on a tree, on a cross, he was a little tad darker than me. He had curly hair like a sheep. He didn't look like the uh, white Jews today. He looked like the Jews that they had in those days because they were able to go to Egypt or whatever and blend right in. 
to make something, you know, I'm not making a big deal out of it, but I know Jesus was a Jew indeed and still, still was a Jew regardless. So he told me, and when I looked at it, I interpreted it, he was saying he had four lips. His lips were probably bigger than mine's. Like a, a, the Afri African descent, in which I am African descent. And um, yes, I do have European in me, but I'm more African descent, the sub-Saharan, than anything else. But uh, I have some great bloodlines, thank the Lord. Healthy bloodlines, too. Um, to make this, well, he told me, I died for the ghetto, too. He let remind me of that. I said, he must know me more than I know myself, in other words. And so, uh, you know, even though I lived in the ghetto, but we live, we, we didn't act, I, I didn't have the ghetto mind. I was a boozy kid. I didn't have much, but I was going to eat certain things that I didn't think was, uh, you know, nutritious at the time. Even if I was going to be whipped, I wasn't going to do it. I just didn't like the food. I didn't know about being poor. But now the great Lord Jesus Christ has blessed me. So I, I, I don't have no, those problems anymore. So continue with me in chapter um, 11 and the Lord willing uh, 12, 13, 14, all the way down to the last chapter and verses. God bless you. And I hope the Lord has blessed your heart to uh, go back and, re, you know, look at these videos, especially this chapter as well. Love you. And uh, I'll see you later.